a very warm good morning students today we are going to study act 1 scene 1 of merchant of venice i have already uh, uploaded a video for the half portion of the scene we will be continuing with the explanation further on uh, we stopped at a place where uh, we were discussing about salarino was discussing about the two types of people and how uh, they have been created by nature how, how nature has formed them and then uh, we see selanio saying here comes bisanio your most noble kingsman graciano and lorenzo fare ye well we leave you now with better company selanio here says to uh, antonio and the uh, uh, antonio that bisanio was seen coming he says that now we are going to leave you in a better friendship with a better companion selanio says i would have stayed till i had made you merry if worthy your friends had not prevented me he is using this statement he says that if at all worthy friends would have not stopped me i would have made you laugh i would have made you merry Antonio says that your worth is very dear in my regard. Antonio says that I regard you also very much. It's not that your worth is less in front of other friends. I think I take it your own business calls on you and you embrace the occasion to depart. He says that I can make out that you have something to do. You have your own business to do, and so you are taking this as an opportunity to go from here, and so you are departing. Bassanio enters Lorenzo and Graciano. That's why I have mentioned in the beginning uh, of your uh, scene. Uh, only till here it's written. Enter Antonio, Salerno, and Salerno. But uh, they also enter in the scene after Salerno and Salerno depart. You will see Bassanio, Graciano, and Lorenzo. So Lorenzo says, "My Lord Bassanio, since you have found Antonio, we too will leave you." Uh, Lorenzo says to uh, Bassanio that you have already got your friend Antonio here, so we both will leave. Who will leave? Graciano and Lorenzo will leave. But Bassanio, I will not fail you. Bassanio uh, talks. Uh, Lorenzo just says that uh, we are leaving. We two will leave. But at dinner time, I pray you have in mind where we must meet. He just says that make sure that at dinner time in the evening you are going to meet us. So Bassanio says I will not fail you. Bassanio just says that yes, of course I will be there at dinner time. But Graciano in the meantime was observing Antonio, and he just speaks up. He says, "You look not well, Signor Antonio. You have too much respect upon the world. They lose it." that do buy it with much care believe me you are marvelously changed graciano says that you don't look well uh, signor antonio you are too much burdened it suppose with the things that is happening in and around you or with the affairs that is going out in the world people know uh, who are much worried about the world they lose everything they they are not even able to enjoy themselves they are not able to enjoy their own wealth they are not able to enjoy their own happiness believe me you are marvelously changed trust me you are completely changed antonio i hold the world but as a world graciano a stage where every man must play a part and mine is sad one Uh, the slide has been, become very popular in uh, English literature. That this world is a stage. Yes, it's a stage. Each one of us have a part to play. Somebody plays a role of a sad person. Somebody plays a part of a happy person. So he states that that it is the place every man has to play a part, and mine is a sad one. and antonio says that i am playing the part of a sad person graciano says let me play the fool then he says that if at all you are playing the part of a sad person let me play the part of a fool let me become a jester let me become a joker with mirth and laughter let old wrinkles come he says that let there be joy and laughter till i have wrinkles on my face because of old age and let my liver 
rather heat with wine than my heart cool with mortifying groans he says let me drink wine and celebrate make people happy celebrate be cool my spirit rather than complaining of pains and groans like an old person why should a man whose blood is warm within sit like his grandsire cut in alabaster he says why a man who should be very energetic in his youthfulness when he is young he should be dancing and claiming and playing here and there about why he should sit like his grandfather grandsire means grandfather a uh, tombstone sitting in the corner like a statue of white marble in the corner of the house sleep when he wakes like a young person we should always be regenerating we should be jumping and ex be excited happy then why should we sleep when we should be waking when why should we sit dull when should we should be working and creep into jaundice by being peevish and get affected by jaundice by being jealous of somebody else it was it was a belief during that time you can say contemporary belief that if at all people were jealous of somebody else they got jaundice their skin turned yellow so he says that why should i got get the disease by being peevish not at all i tell thee what antonio he says that i tell you antonio i love thee he says that i have a lot of love for you antonio and it is my love that speaks and it is because of that love that adoration that i am speaking so much there are a sort of men he says there are a lot of people whose visages do cream and standard like a standing pond there are people no visages means facial expression okay there are people whose faces are like a standing pond now understand what a standing pond is the purpose of standing pond is what to give entertainment to people and on the upper layer of that pond we have algae form no green colored what you might have seen in the similar way when we warm milk what happens a cream is settled on the top of that milk after we boil it and it settles down what the purpose is is just to put a show that milk puts a show of by putting a cream on it the pond has a beautiful green algae with lot of beautiful plants lotus and all which shows that it is beautiful but in reality what it is in the similar way there are people whose faces no when you look to those people their faces are for entertainment of other people and their purpose is they dress up understand this their purpose is to dress up their face has been dressed up in order to show people that they are so intelligent uh, they have opinion they are too smart people full of wisdom wisdom means understanding gravity they maintain a lot of uh, gravity you know like me there is no one else in the world and profound conceit profound means deep conceit means knowledge they are full of so much knowledge they pretend to do that as who would say and they say that i am sir oracle sir oracle here refers to a messenger of god they are the most intelligent people on the earth they claim themselves to be that and on their face they develop a, a expression of deep knowledge and understanding and what they pretend that when i open my lips like when i open my mouth to speak no other dog should bark that means that no one else should speak when i am speaking i am the only one and no one else should intervene they pretend to do that oh my antonio i do know of these that therefore only are reputed wise he just talks to antonio he says that uh, grishano says that i know so many such people who are only for name sake wise in reality they are not wise it is just for name say that they are wise for saying nothing actually you know they maintain that gravity they will not speak a word in front of anyone with that pretension that they are the most intelligent people on earth and they will remain quiet listening 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 to everyone and uh, just that pretension and uh, they are known reputed for saying nothing 
when i am sure if they should speak would almost damn those ears which hearing them would call their brothers fool but greshano says but i am confident enough that the moment these people will speak no they will make the other people who are listening to them deaf are you able to make up what greshano is willing to say he just says that some people maintain that gravity of not speaking but the moment they come to speak up they will deaf the people who uh, are listening to them so he says that i will uh, not talk much and those uh, sin of calling their brothers fool he sh- he says that i will tell the more of this another time he says that i will talk about it the other time but fish not with this melancholy bait he suggests antonio that you don't take up this expression to carry the attention of other people to catch fish he is just giving an example that do not go do not seek for false popularity by making your face a tool for that come uh, for this fool got in this opinion come on good lorenzo fare ye well a while i will end my exhaustion after dinner he says that let's go uh, uh, lorenzo we should depart in farewell we should depart from here and he says that i will end my discussion at the dinner time lorenzo well we will leave you then till dinner time lorenzo says to antonio okay then we are leaving you till dinner time we will be meeting then i must be one of these same dumb wise man for grishan who never lets me speak Lorenzo says that I also will appear to be like the same dumb people about whom uh, he is telling if at all because Graciano he talks a lot and he never allows me to speak Graciano well keep me company but two ears more thou shall not know the sound of thy no tongue mm. Graciano says that mm. remain with me for some more time and you will forget your own voice this was just meant for laughter Antonio farewell i will grow a talker for this game um Antonio says farewell i will listen to your uh, uh, words and i will try to talk from now on Graciano thanks i say for silence is only commendable in a neat tongue right Graciano says that thanks you will listen to my silence silence is only praiseworthy when it is commendable when it is required we should all uh, it's just a suggestion for you also children never always remain quiet i'm not saying become talkative disturb the class while the lessons are going on but you should be open in your feelings you should be open uh, to your talks you should you will feel lighter sometimes you no know, we need to talk so it is just said by graciano that we all should always be cheerful if you are sad you should be sad but you should speak up talking uh, boosts up you should come out with your mind to others okay so it is just said that but that doesn't mean that when you are required to be silent you are going on talking no silence is only commendable when it is required not always got it okay uh, now uh, graciano and lorenzo also depart they also exit from the scene now who are left here we are left with antonio and bassanio as in the introductory part i have already told you that these two fellows antonio and bassanio share an indefinite bond or you can say undefined bond of friendship the love for each other cannot be uh, calculated by any means antonio is always ready for bassanio to do anything so let us see how uh, here bassanio will uh, talk his heart to antonio and how antonio is going to help bassanio in this situation so uh, bassanio just uh, talks about graciano Antonio inquires Bassanio is that anything now is there anything of concern now he just ask that is there anything that you want to talk to Bassanio Graciano speaks an infinite deal of nothing Bassanio just talks about uh, Graciano he says Graciano indulges in nonsense talk he talks a lot no one no man in Venice talks like him his reasons are as two grains of wheat hide in two bushels of chaff 
You shall seek all day. Air you find them and when you have them, they are not worth the search. He says that you may spend the whole day listening to his, um, what he says. It is in a similar way you are searching for two grains in the whole bush of shaft. And when you search whole day, you get only two grains which is of no worth. In the similar way, Greciano also goes on talking, talking, talking and when you try to have the gist of something, you will be found with nothing. They are of no value. Got it? But children, uh, although Bassanio speaks this about Greciano, as when you will go on to know about Greciano, in the whole play, no, you will never find him really talking rubbish. There is some sense in what he talks what wrong has he said when he has talked about, uh, he just said that we are young, we are energetic, we should leap and dance and uh, talk about why should we sit like our grandfather? What wrong did he say? But still, maybe he is more talkative among his friends. That's why he has been said to be a person with indefinite, infinite deal of nothing. That's a statement by Bassani. Okay, Antonio, well tell me now, what lady is the same to whom you saw a secret pilgrimage? that you today promised to tell me of? Antonio says to Bassanio, well, you were going to tell me about the lady whom you like. You have promised that you will be telling me about her today. Bassanio says, it's not unknown to you, Antonio, how much I have disabled my estate by something showing a more swelling pot than my faint means would grant continence. Bassanio says that you know Antonio, how I have spent my meager fortune by having living a very lordly life. Now we will understand the character of Bassanio here. Bassanio himself says that it is not unknown to you Antonio that how extravagant my life was, how spendthrift my life was, how I used to spend my money recklessly. Okay, uh, than I had with me. This, no, by something showing a more swelling pot, than my fame means would grant goodness. But today, as I have spent all my money and left with nothing, and in this situation, my situation is not good enough to live in this moderate income. Nor do I now make moan to be a British for such a noble rate, but my chief care is to come fairly off from the great depths wherein my time something too prodigal hath left me gage. He says that I do not complain about it, that I cannot live in the same manner, in the same style as I used to live because I am left with no money. My main worry is that how I will clear my debts. How I am going to clear my debts. What I have taken from the other people around. To you Antonio, I owe the most in money and in love. He says to you Antonio, uh, I have, uh, I am debt. I am in debt to you more in love and money. And from your love, I have a warranty. And from your love, I have a guarantee. That to unburden on my plots and purpose. He says that from your affection, I have a guarantee that I have strength enough that I will all disclose to you what my plots and purposes are and how I am going to clear my debts. I owe. Antonio just says, I pray you, good Bassanio, let me know it. And if it stand as you yourself still do, within the eye of honor, be assured my purse, my person, my extremist means lie all unlocked to your occasion. Antonio says, tell me everything good Bassanio. Whatever is in your mind, what plans, what plots you have in your mind. If at all, what you speak will be justifiable enough. Everything that I owe. My purse here means my money. My extremist means, means my body. And all the resources, whatever is mine, will go to you. Bassanio says, in my school days, when I had lost one shaft, I shot his fellow of the same self-flight, the same self-way with more advice watch to find the other worth. And by adventuring both, I oft found both. He just gives an example of his school days. 
he says that uh, in my school days i used to uh, shoot arrow i shot it in uh, i shot it once and again i repeatedly uh, shot the other arrow in the same direction and the purpose was by adventuring the first arrow i was able to find both okay so uh, by risking the second arrow i often got both and further on he says i urge this childhood proof because what follows is pure innocence i owe you much and like a willful youth that which i owe is lost but if you please shoot the another arrow that self state way which you did shoot the first i do not doubt as i will watch the aim or to find both or bring your latter hazard back again and thankfully rest debater for the first he says that i have given you this arrow shooting of first and the second he just says that i have given you this childhood example because what my purpose is pure innocence purpose is now harmless i owe you much repeatedly he is saying to antonio that i owe you much and he says uh, that like a self filled young man i would have lost everything i got from you but if you give me another loan he is asking for one more loan from him like the first one as you have earlier given me money i want it for the second time i do not doubt while i watch the aim so carefully then i shall repay you both the loans now understand is a uh, yeah, clever thing here besanio has taken a lot of money from antonio previously but he has spent it all in his extravagant living and he has not returned him any money which he has taken from him now uh, as we know that uh, he need it once again so he has come to antonio and he gives his childhood proof that how first he has shot an arrow in a, uh, one direction and again he shot it twice and by adventuring the second arrow he would find the first one so he is claiming that give me loan for one more time and i'll make sure that i pay you both the loans okay and remain your grateful debtor for the first and i will always remain a grateful for the first one antonio you know as we have seen he uh, was now in a melancholic state but was a good friend of besanio what reply does he give after this you well you know me well and here in spend but time to wind about my love with circumstances he says that you know me very well besanio and why are you wasting your time by all the references you are making about my love and out of doubt you do me now more wrong in making question of my uttermost than if you had made waste all of i have he says that surely you are doing me more wrong by doubting about my readiness to help you okay uh, you are doubting me that i am not ready to help you by saying all these things <laughs> just imagine children if we also get such friends life would have been easier taking debts after debts money after money no one is going to it was 21st century you need to stand on your own foot okay to assist rarely some people are there to help you with money the 21st century is a life with money okay uh then do but say to me what i should that in my knowledge may be done and i am pressed unto it therefore speak he says that uh, just you speak up and if at all i will be able to do i will be obliged to help you so please speak okay now it's an important thing belmont will be talking uh, uh, besanio will be talking about his lady love okay he just says in belmont is a lady richly left and she is fair and fairer than that word a oh, wondrous virtues Sometimes from her eyes, I did receive fair, speechless messages. Her name is Portia. The Sanjay just says that in Belmont there is a princess. She is very pretty. She is very beautiful. More than being beautiful, she is full of wondrous virtues. Okay, virtues means qualities beyond. Okay, he just says that she is full of great virtues. Sometimes. he just says that sometimes i have received 
from her eyes she has not spoken okay it was just from her eyes that bassanio has felt the silent message of love got it the silent messages her eyes spoke those silent speechless messages her name is portia he just tells to uh, antonio that her name is portia nothing undervalued to cato's daughter he says that we cannot undervalue her okay she is no less than cato's daughter and brutus's portia now you have to understand here uh, cato's daughter uh, who was the wife of brutus brutus is again one of the character of shakespeare's play uh, julius caesar okay uh, there also so uh, shakespeare is comparing the beauty of portia to cato's daughter she was a very defined beauty any of the character lady character of shakespeare no if you go to read rosalind of uh, as you like it olivia uh, again any any of this um, ganymede you know she was a transformed olivia rosalind portia california all these lady characters you know they are very strong defined characters of shakespeare uh, you will fall in love with every play that you read of shakespeare with the artistry or the mastery of creation of such epic lady characters i'll never find any loopholes in these uh, or folly you can say in any of these characters so in the similar way here uh, this portia is compared to brutus's portia he just says nor is the wide world ignorant of her worth for the four winds blow in from every coast renown suitors and her sunny locks hang on her temples like a golden fleece she says that she is it's not that the world is not aware of her everyone is aware of her from the four corners of the world east west north south from every places suitors have come to woo portia just they have uh, come sailing across to the coast in order to uh, look to her sunny locks sunny locks over here is referred to her golden hairs it's just like hang on her temple like a golden fleece temple over here is referred to forehead okay so here it is just said that the temple it's just like a golden fleece okay her beautiful golden locks which makes her seat a belmen colca strand and many jasons come in quest of her here you have to understand jason was a warrior okay he has fought for golden fleece golden fleece actually is a golden covered uh, um, hair on a fleece so there was a lot of fight for it and jason finally won you will get the reference of it and in the similar way portia's hair is compared to the golden fleece and her home at belmont is compared like an ancient kingdom of colchis and uh, in order to get that from that sheep no that golden fleece many suitors have fought for it but finally jason was victorious in the similar way many suitors will be coming to wo portia win portia and only one who will win will be like jason and portia is like a golden fleece that is the comparison okay uh, oh my antonio but i but had i but the means to hold a rival place with one of them i had a mind presages me such theft that i should question this be fortunate bisanio here tells to antonio that if at all i would be lucky enough if i would be fortunate enough i would i would win in this uh, lottery of casket or i will be fortunate to have this chance but i do not have the amount Antonio, just uh, it's the last part. He just says, "Thou knowest that all my fortunes are at sea." Antonio just says to Bassanio that you very well know that my fortune, my luck is at the sea. Neither have I money nor commodity to raise the present sum. He says that presently I do not have cash or credit to give you that amount. Therefore, go forth. he says that therefore you can move ahead try what my credit can in venice do you can try my luck in venice you can see that if at all you can get that money from anyone that shall be ragged 
that shall be rad means you can increase the amount as much as you want even to the utmost to furnish the to belmen to go to belmen so that you are equipped enough with money to go to belmen to fair portion to win portion go presently inquire and so will i he says that go inquire in uh, venice from where you will get money and i too will do where money is and i no question make to have it of my trust or for my sake he says that you can have it on your either uh, you can you make me as the creditor okay he, i will be the guarantor on my personal surety you can take that amount from anyone who offers you that amount in venice because i am not having that here the scene ends act 1 scene 1 uh, i hope you have understood this explanation we will move further on if you at all like this like and subscribe for more updates thank you